Welcome to a MediaTek podcast. This is MediaTek Table Talk. And in this episode, we are very fortunate to have with us a group of writers. So in today's conversation, we're going to be talking about the process of writing from many different perspectives and getting some insights and ideas and maybe tools and tips on how uh, you as listeners are going to be uh, come and practice at being better writers. So uh, we have a lot to get through today, but first I want to uh, introduce or have each speaker introduce themselves actually as to who they are and a little bit of what they've currently done in writing. And Jim, why don't you get us started? Sure, my name's Jim Otis, I'm a writer. I write poems, songs, uh, screenplays, uh, currently producing something that's to be shot in Cuba called Remember Me and uh, working on a couple things with Siren Studios. Perfect. My name is Lee Shapiro, and I'm a screenwriter for, for film, television. I'm actually currently writing my first circus, which is really weird. Mm -hmm. And um, I also teach screenwriting in college. I'm Bennett Litwin. I'm a writer, producer, and I produced a feature film here at MediaTek. Um, no I've shape. written 32 screenplays, uh, six books, and currently working with all these guys on something. So uh, I love every part of the process. My name is Jay Shu. I am your host. I'm a writer, producer, director, and also a professor. My name is Deb King. I'm a screenwriter and a director. I've worked with um, Sony Studios for Columbia TriStar on two different shows, I've worked with independent studios. I've also been a book publisher, magazine publishing. I have a number of my own books on poetry, short stories, uh, and I'm currently working on a graphic novel with Rick Villa and a feature screenplay with Bennett Littler. Perfect. My name is Ricardo Villa. I'm a producer and graphic novel creator. Currently working on a project called Batan, based on the Batan Death March, turning that into a graphic novel and hopefully a, a film. Excellent. So, gentlemen, I'm going to get us started today. And, uh, Jim, I'm going to get started with you. The question is, uh, what does your typical writing routine or schedule look like? Mm. And how do you maintain consistency in your work? Wow. Well, you know, since, you know, I'm not a writer by profession, I mean, that's not what I do all the time. So it's, it just hit and miss. So, but I do get up in the morning, you know, I, I have a, I have a pad by my bed and, uh, I'll wake up frequently and write down little notes, parts of dreams, things like that. And I'll get up and I'll, and I have a routine of reading just certain literature in the morning. And, and, and from that, I just stay there. I stay there at the table. I've got a, my writing up instrument, got pens and pencils and paper and things just come to me then. But generally speaking, it's, it's, it's not confusing. It's, I just let it go. Mm -hmm. I just let it go. And I'll be driving down the road. I might pull over. I might write something on a napkin and bring it home and, and write a little structure out of that. Mm -hmm. Just, just that little piece. So I, I don't have to write. I just like to write. It's, it's, it's cathartic for me. Mm -hmm. You pull over. I don't. I just write like wherever I <laughs> That's, good. My, That's my, good note. <laughs> yeah, my accident ratio is not as good as yours. You know, That's... yeah, so I just, I, it just comes when it comes. I'm not under any pressure to write. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a lot of people that get paid to write. I don't get paid a lot to write. I just write and whatever happens, happens. I let it go. That's what I do. Lee, what's your, what's your process? How do you maintain it? So my, my writing process is kind of weird. It's, it's all over the board. Um, unfortunately, my best ideas come where electronic devices and paper are not conducive, like toilet, shower, car, right? <laughs> all these places where that's where my best ideas come. So I have to always try to figure out a way to, to get them onto something that I can use later, yeah. right? To write with. I prefer to write collaboratively. Um, I find it the easiest way to write is always having someone to bounce ideas off of. Someone who's faster than me always makes my writing process better because I'm more of a rewriter than a writer. So if I can give it to somebody who can write quickly, even if it's badly, doesn't matter, then they bring it back to me and I'm able to to retool it, you know, at my leisure. You know, I think it, it's interesting because I think for writing process, it's an individual person's thing, right? That's right. In, in the sense Absolutely. that, like, I prefer... Now I have pads of paper all over my home because mm -hmm. like, like all of us, inspiration strikes it on our, 
So I have pads of paper, and if I'm watching TV, I might get a, an idea, and I'm like, oh, and I'll write something down. Or I may be reading a book, and I'll write something down, and then I collect those. But if I'm working on a, a script, I have a, I do try to get into a routine where I will have my morning routine, breakfast, read the paper, do whatever I'm doing. And I prefer mornings because I haven't been inundated with phone calls or texts or emails, and it's like the cash is clean. And so, and then I'll, I'll write, uh, till, till noon or so, try and get as many and I'll, I'll set myself a goal. Like, okay, I want to get 10. If it's a screenplay, I'm going to get 10 pages written. If it's a novel, okay, I need to get 2000 words written. And so that becomes my process. And then every day I do that. And I'm one of those writers and we haven't spoken about this, but I'm one of those writers where I don't self edit. Mm. So I, I just don't. Like for mm-hmm. 10 days straight, I'm just writing, writing, writing. I don't go back and look at what I've done unless I get to a roadblock or something. I got to wait, what was that character's name? But I will just write and write and write. And then once I get those 90 or 110 pages done, then I'll go back. But I do know some writers that they prefer self-edit. There's some that they'll write page one to 10 on Monday, Tuesday. They read page one to 10 and then it's, okay, got that refined. Now I'm doing 10 to 20, whatever yeah, it like is. Like you said, it's personal. It's it is, it is. and I have to, I have to self edit honestly because mm. I forget what I wrote yesterday. Oh, right. I mean, I want to make sure it's fresh, and then it's t- tweaking words, it's tweaking the character. Is that character true to itself by page twelve, as I started in six? Yeah. So, and you prefer to do that as opposed to going back to the beginning from. The I'll do all of it. You know me. I'll, I'll yeah. do sixty edits on a script. I'm not done. And that's that's low sixty edits. <laughs> <laughs> More than that on fractal. Oh, we, yeah. Well, and we wrote, honestly, we wrote. You're still editing Fractor's on set, and the we, movie's we done. Produced the, we, we, <laughs> we had 60 something drafts to start as a drama and end up a comedy. Mm-hmm. We had 67 drafts by the time we got to set. Mm-hmm. We wrote every night on set, and the actors were phenomenal. This is why you want to work with professional actors. We would write till midnight. Uh, the older ones, we would print the pages. The younger ones, we would email the pages so they could go off their phones. Right. And they were off book mm. in the morning. So not only did we write through set, we wrote in post-production because we had voiceover we were changing through. So if you think you're done writing, you're not done writing. You're never done. And you joke about it. You make fun yeah. of me all the time. But it's you're not done writing until it's in the can. And, and but, would it, but would it have been better edited or could it, would it have been okay at 10 passes? No, uh, not for me. Not for me. Yeah. I, I, and I, I think am, that's individual too. For Bennett, it's not. It's, it's, but the audience is the one that's the proof in the pudding. Yeah, but, and, and we've got that. I'm going to go for Bennett, because yeah. working with Bennett, I know that if there's a 10% incremental plus that you can do to a scene or a joke, you do it. And mm-hmm. you're always plusing, you're always adding until, like you say, until that's on the screen. You can probably enhance something to make it better, right? Yeah, and you edit it. And to, to you know, to Lee's point, the collaboration is fantastic because mm-hmm. you're reading dialogue back and forth. Yeah, as opposed to reading yourself with yourself, it's just night and day. Yeah, everything sounds horrible when it comes out of my mouth. So it's like, well, see, and I love what he said about editing going back. So for me, I've got to put myself back into the place I was. Mm. So if uh, it's if it's a historical project, I need to get back into that time setting. Um, most of the fiction stuff, it's the same. I've got to get back into the mindset of the character that I'm writing about. So I will go and read. I try, try, usually fail, not to rewrite. I'm here just to read it to pick the voice back up. Well, Typically, that- it's it, it it's it's a fail. I'm going to change something. I'm going to change something, and I'm going to keep tweaking. Yeah. And this is where um, I've had to learn from different editors, Doug King being one of them, that sometimes you've got to just let it go. Mm-hmm. Like, turn this over, turn it over. It, the way it is, is the way it is. Very hard for me. It's so extremely like that, difficult, but he was, as an editor, he, he was a great teacher for me mm-hmm. to, to be able to do that. So that's a good transition to another question that I have um, regarding research. So... When you are researching a project, what is your process or how do you go about researching a project? And I'm going to throw another twist to that, too. Um, 
projects are different when you're doing it for yourself as opposed to a client. Mm -hmm. So I want to kind of, as you guys have thoughts now, that's a very different process, right? When And time is is part of it. So let's talk about research and talk about how then is your process when you have somebody that's on the clock that you're trying to get things done for. Rick, let's start with you. For me, researching projects, like I was stating before, whether it's a fiction or historical fiction, I've got to get myself in that mindset. Um, so for the graphic novel, Praetorian, so I had to go and start one, studying the Praetorian Guard, where they came from, mm. uh, as far as uh, the continents where they're coming from. They weren't just Romans. What, what all is making up this army? Uh, I shouldn't say they weren't all Romans. They were all Romans. <laughs> so, <laughs> Rome was everywhere it decided to be. Um, but there were pieces because the comic was also interlaced with theology. Then it was a deep dive into theology. And Catholic school just wasn't enough. Yeah. I had to go even deeper than that, you know, and I even made jokes to some of my Catholic school teachers, you know, let them know, hey, I'm researching this. What was this? What was that? You know, and so it just keeps going. And then I, I bounce ideas off of different people. Like, I've got this character. This is what's going on. But I can't answer this question. Yeah. You know, get a little, you know, schizophrenic at this point going, I'm having this conversation with my character and he's not telling me everything I need, need to know. So and, this is where I come in. And you know, Praetorian's an interesting project because I worked with Rick on that, on book two and three, three mm -hmm. and now we're doing the second series. Mm -hmm. um, and that was a situation where technically he's my client. And so I did some research on that and, and we would talk about it. We would, you know, outline and all that. But then I would, I, I always do my research in the beginning, but sometimes as you're going along something will pop up in the story and you're like oh wait a minute now i gotta go research that. i didn't know to even research that and i go back and we'll research something because i think we had some characters because yours is dealing with time jumps and, and things yes. like that so there's it's a it's a rich world and when you're uh, yeah. when you're doing world when you're doing world building you are researching um historical things, but then you're also kind of just research, uh, researching to get uh, inspiration, maybe, you know, whether it's a uh, costume or, or whatever. Go ahead. I uh, was hired to write the Ben Hogan script. It's uh, with several different people. We will get it made eventually. And Ben Hogan, for those who don't know, is one of the greatest golfers of all time. He was uh, born in like 1912. Uh, he's been gone for a long time, but uh, just an incredible biopic. I did all the research on the historical what tournaments he won, who he won against, and the scoreboard and all those things. But I, then I wanted to get in the character. Mm -hmm. And that dialogue's not, it doesn't exist. Yeah. So to your point, you understand the personal trials and tribulations, mm -hmm. the challenges of the era, but then you got to write from that era. I'm so proud of myself. I looked up a jokes from the 1940s. <laughs> and I actually found a joke that's in the script. I hope I'm not getting plagiarism and problems with that. But maybe you know, yeah, find you because out. humor yes. was different. You know, <laughs> Texas humor in the 1940s. Yes. And, well, and I read Bennett's script, loved it. Yeah. Loved it. And, and it did transport me back. I did feel like I'm that's, back in this time. And, and that's, you bring up an interesting point, Bennett, because you're really researching multiple things. You may be researching the time period. You may be researching vernacular because the way people spoke in the 20s, 30s, 40s, it's back the way people spoke in 1980 is different, y'all. No. And, you know, for totally. sure. Yeah. Like, and so, um, but so you're, you're researching. And then if it has in your story, if it has spiritual connotations or mm -hmm. supernatural connotations, now you're researching that. So there's really... I don't know that research ever ends on a project because it's like the rewriting because you're always, again, can you plus it? Can you add something to it? Oh, if they, I just found out about the, like, for instance, symbolism, that's what Dan Brown is really good about. It's not necessarily, if you've ever read Dan Brown's um, uh, Da Vinci Code or any of those, he may not be the best writer, but he sure researches the heck out of something and he knows the symbolism of paintings and da Vinci's and different things. And it makes for such a really rich world. And that's where you get excited, whether it's Dune, Foundation, pick any world building avatar. 
it's rich because somebody did some research on those things. Jay, back, I, I'm sorry, go ahead. Okay. Oh, Jay, I was going to say, back to your point about working for a client, because I don't know if we've addressed that. I know that's even an A and B thing there, because if the client is corporate, a lot of times I expect them to have the research done and provided mm -hmm. to me, and they usually do. Like, this is what we want in there. If it's an entertainment client, like a movie studio or something, it's like, that's why I hired you. Yeah. You do the research. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I know for me, when I have to do the research, and I think y'all y'all mentioned this without using this word, I always go to SMEs, which every time I say that, it sounds like a Dr. Seuss character, a SME, the land of the SMEs, which are subject matter experts. Mm -hmm. So like I had to write, I was writing a, a big budget feature about a sinkhole, you know, it's a comedy. And I don't know anything about geology or sinkhole. So th luckily I have a cousin who's a geologist and a surveyor. That's who I went to for to make sure that my comedy still had the foundation of truth to it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think truth is really important. Um, so when you're coming up with ideas, mm -hmm. you know, uh, uh, and, and there are times when all of us have had kind of blocks of some sort. We get, well, maybe except for Bennett, <laughs> um, we get these situations where you kind of have writer's block. How do you tackle that when you get stuck how do you tackle that so because bennett never gets stuck let's let's talk to bennett and see what his approach is the question is when you get stuck as a writer what are the solutions ah and that's so that's how i hear the question i question. don't have writer's block i refuse to accept that that's a real thing i get stuck temporarily and then that's the I use the word stuck as synonym, synonym with opportunity. That's when my best stuff comes. Uh, and my son and I were writing uh, uh, Frackers and Bedbugs, which is a feature that we're working on. Uh, stuck meant there's something new that's going to come that I've never thought of before. Because I have to come with something new. That's what you go to that road. You got to go somewhere. And I've never been here before. So I look at it as opportunity. And to uh, many, many answers is how you take a walk, you cook a meal. We talked about some of that beforehand. You change up your situation. You take a hot shower. You call a friend. You listen to Tom Petty and play solitaire. I mean, that's one of my things lately. <laughs> so, yeah, just uh, just change it up. And your mind, my mind is always moving. That's why I'm not worried about st stuck. It's just it's just a thing. Mm -hmm. So y'all have mentioned collaboration. Mm -hmm. I'd like to hear some of your experiences with collaborating. I've had an opportunity to work with writers. Some writers are great about collaborating and some aren't, right? <laughs> so uh, I'd like for you to share some ideas or thoughts. Lee, let's start with you. What, what has been your experience when you're collaborating with a writing partner. Oh, so yeah, my my collaborative experience has been actually very great. I've been blessed. Um, I usually, without without trying to find it, I usually end up working with someone who's faster than me. And that's really anybody in the world. So that's not luck. Anyone in the world <laughs> is faster than me as a writer. And because that's not where my strong suit is. My strong suit is not turnaround time. My strong suit is rewrite. So it works really well. It's very, you know, it's a it's a very symbiotic relationship, if you will. Because I'll, we, we, we get together, we come up with story, we spend, you know, 75% of our time coming up with story. And then I send him or her off with the, the draft, say, go do it. You know, and they'll turn it around in like a week to two weeks, which is, you know, amazing. And then I'm able to take it, spend my time on the rewrite process. So then I do that by myself. Then we come back together for the second, third, fourth, et cetera passes so for me it's been it's been amazing and when you do that is that a, do you establish with your collaborator beforehand you're going to write i'm going to rewrite is it spoken or unspoken it's spoken oh, okay. yeah because i usually if i if i not that i've ever had to interview anybody it kind of just happens organically but it we still talk it out what are your strengths what are your strengths you know what do yeah. you like what do you not like what, how are you with deadlines etc yeah because i think you can I've had multiple collaborations and I'm collaborating right now with Bennett. And it's interesting because everybody has strong suits and, and weaknesses. And some people are better at dialogue. Some people are better at writing the action lines and, and those. And so I think as long as it's spoken beforehand and there is kind of delineated the roles and everything, then that's better because I've had a couple collaborations where it wind up 
it wound up not being a collaboration by the end of the script mm -hmm. because I was writing. I was like, okay, you're going to add to it. And they're like, no, you're doing great. I'm like, this is not necessarily a collaboration, <laughs> you know? And so I think it's good to, to a collaboration is a partnership. It's a yeah. marriage. You're, yeah. you're, 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 and I know you had great collaborations with Adam, your, your son. Adam, it's Jay and I wrote a book together. Yeah. yeah. With, I've, I love collaborating because, you know, I'm a omnivert. I'm part extrovert, part introvert. And so the extrovert, this is great fun for me. I, I love meeting all you guys and the crew is fantastic. But, you know, when you're writing, you're by yourself. I mean, it's it's you and you. So if you have somebody to share that little nugget you created with and then they give you some input and, and vice versa. It's that's uh, that's joyful to me. Do, that, do you prefer collaboration over writing on your own? Depends. Uh, I had I, I wrote a crypto script. Yeah, on my own, just because I loved it, but I but I shared it. I did what you were talking about earlier. I had selected selected others read and give me notes. Yeah. Your notes were fantastic, and I implemented most of them. I ignored a few, but that's that's. that's <laughs> but that that's part of the collaboration. Yes. Right? it's never all. Yeah, you know. Yeah, itself. So, yeah. I mean, you know, if it wasn't for uh, if it wasn't for a writing partner that I had, that a few, you know, Rustin Branneman. If it wasn't for him, I probably would never collaborate with anybody because, you know, for me, writing is very personal mm. and a lot of it's fear based. You know, some of it is. And I don't want to share that with the world. A lot of it because I don't want it to be laughed at. I don't want to be judged. And these things that young writers are coming up and, and, and experiencing, you know, is this any good? And you have to you have to submit that, show that to someone. But I I would send a three act structure. And I would send a, a collaborative, uh, my own ideas to a writing partner. And he would look at that and, and send me back information like this. Jim, this is phenomenal. This is really, really good. What else do you tell me more? And then I would put together some five, 10 pages of a synopsis and I would send that to him. And he would be, he would be the dialogue guy, mm -hmm. but it'd be my, my, be my concrete ideas and my follow through with this consistency and continuity with the story. And then he just fill in the, fill in the blanks. Now that has backfired. I let him take that. I let him take, I remember one time in one, one particular screenplay, I won't go too long, but I sent him 10 pages and he said, this is really good. And I said, why don't you just continue? It's, I mean, he sent me back to 10 pages of dialogue for my story. And I said, this is really good. This is really good, pal. Uh, and I said, just continue. Well, he sent me the 90 pages later. I said, this is not even my story. What happened? <laughs> what happened after pages 11? Yeah. So it's important to stay in touch with your partner yeah. and, and keep that. Well, I, I think depending on the story, you, you were saying, Jim, that, that some stories that are more personal, I'm actually not going to collaborate on that, mm -hmm. you know, but if it's something else that, um, someone can add to it and it's like like if you're cooking and you're making a jambalaya you know it's like oh rick's got a spice that i wouldn't have yeah. even thought of oh that's good don't touch my food yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> and 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 the other thing that i think that we haven't touched on is if you're writing for a client that's a collaboration yeah because your client like i've written a, I've written a couple screenplays for independent producers they come to me with their story and they may even have a treatment and then I take it over, but I have to be, and, and it's that fine line because as a writer, I start getting married to the characters I've written. Mm -hmm. I start getting married yes. and then I, I deliver something and he says, yeah, but, and I'm, and then I've got to like, I got to swallow that writer in me and I'll be like, okay, you're paying the bill. I've got to make a change unless there's something that like, you got to choose your battles in a collaboration, right? Because you've got like, like Bennett and I don't always agree on things, but there are things that we choose our battles and we say, okay, which hill am I going to die on? Mm -hmm. And this, I don't feel so much about this. I feel a lot about, so I'm going to give that up and, and it becomes that collaborative uh, uh, compromise, right? And this is what we dealt with on Praetorian. Mm -hmm. There were aspects of the story that as we were creating books two and three, we were throwing out ideas and I'm like, well, that's a great idea. However, we need to hold this because later in the story, this happens. And he's like, since when? Well, yeah. Since always. <laughs> since always in here. Yeah. Since always in here. <laughs> and then let me go ahead and tell you the backstory. I forgot. My bad. Let me tell you the backstory. Whoa, that would have been good to know when I was writing because this, this, this. Okay. Okay. You're right. You're right. The story exists. 
out here and not always, well, it can't always exist in here. It's got to come out. Well, it's like this podcast right here. Yeah. I mean, how good would it be to listen to just any one of us for an hour? Not that good. Well, maybe you guys, but not me. <laughs> but together as a collaborative, for yourself. as a collaborative, <laughs> this is, this is fun. Yes. And I'm, I'm learning things that I haven't. I mean, when, when, when I wrote a script and it was sold, I had to be comfortable with like, okay, I'm selling this now. They're going to rewrite this. Yeah. Someone's going to rewrite this and it's not going to be, it's not going to be my story altogether anymore. And I have to be comfortable with that. I got paid for it. Now it's not mine anymore. I got to let that go. Yeah. See, no, feel when like I that. get, when I get a little bit more up, maybe I can hold on to some of that writing and, and, and have more of the input as a producing and directing the film. But mm -hmm. it, it, it's ego check too, right? Yeah. And it, it, it's being able to, and, and. That should be a class, ego check. Ego, one. Yeah, mm -hmm. it really should, because I mean, that that's a big part of collaboration is being flexible and saying, oh, I don't have all the answers. You know, when I work with Rick and he's, hey, we're going to do this. Oh, that's a really good idea. Damn, I wish, oh, darn, I wish we'd come up with that. Um, you know, for Bennett, same thing. And, and so. You have to check your ego at that's the door. That's hard. It's, it's a it, difficult it thing, is. but you're right. But you're right. It's that flexibility and being able to realize that you can learn in a collaboration, whether it's from a client. Like some, and here's one last thing I'll say is that I have had some clients where they don't have a clue what they want until they see yeah. what they don't want. Well, that's it. Right. And I might write something or create something and I say, here you go. And I'm feeling real good about it. And they'll go, yeah, that's not what we want. But now that we know what we don't want, we can tell you what we do. And I'm sure, Jay, you've had that, you know, in, in many cases where you spend all this time laboring mm. over something and then the client comes back and you think you've just I've knocked it out of the ballpark. And they're like, no, but now we know what we do want. And that becomes a, a really yeah, important for part me, of it's learn to listen, listen to learn. Right. Mm -hmm. I, I have to I have to be that guy. And it's it's hard because I'm self-centered. I want. I want, I want it to be my stuff. Yeah. But when I listen to somebody else comment on me and it's, it's come back in a way that convinces me. Yeah. And it's gentle. Maybe not gentle, but it convinces me that it's correct. Like that's the direction this is going and this sounds better. I'm like, really? And other people go, yeah. And mm -hmm. it does. It sounds a little better. Yeah. Yeah. And I can only get that here. See, and I love how you were talking about, or you mentioned the word producer because I do believe there's a difference between being a producer and being a creator or a writer. Mm -hmm. I think there are times where I've taken a story to a certain point, a certain spot in the road as a writer. As a producer, I need to be able to hand that off and yeah. let somebody take it the rest of the way. Good yeah. point. Now that is so hard because I feel so connected to the characters. I see it feel so connected to the story. They're your children. And they are. They are they they are definitely that. They are every you know, Actually every imaginary a friend wants it. Yeah, exactly. So I'm happy that you see what I see. And Jay and I have talked about this over the years. Many, many, many times this has come up as a producer. My job is to give you your next big idea. Hmm. OK, it's not my idea. It's your idea. But as a producer, it's my role to bring you that next big idea. So I've done both. And this is I've mm -hmm. done both produce and Good write. Point. And I got to tell you, when it's your point exactly, Jim. I was very fortunate with Frackers mm -hmm. that I wrote, cast, produced. I did finance it too. Which, that's a miracle. Which it, 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 I'm. That's a miracle. As Eric Jewell said, the media tech guy that's running around here, brilliant guy. He says, I don't even know if you like the movie or not, but congratulations. Yeah, the fact that that got in the can. Said, he said, we, we, from A to Z, we got it scored, we got it edited, we got it CG, we got the acting was good, we got it casted. And I want to do that again. So for anybody who's a writer mm -hmm. and you get, if you ever get to do that, do it. Yep. It's the best thing that I've ever done professionally. And I want to do that again with bed bugs. Mm. And, and the best encouragement is financing. So if there's anybody out there that. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I think one of the things that. <laughs> and, and agree. And, and I, I like the fact that we are doing this at MediaTek because MediaTek is about doing. Great yeah, it's, it's about yeah. it's about giving students an opportunity to actually finish things, because when you finish things, you gain confidence. Yeah. Right. As writers, you gain confidence by by finishing. I, I do want to dovetail now into a topic that I think is relevant. We talked a little bit about collaboration 
But everything that's in the news right now, as we are here, uh, is about artificial intelligence. Mm -hmm. And, and people are starting to use that. People are starting to use that in various different ways. And I kind of wanted to get different people's perspective on artificial intelligence. So, Rick, I'm going to start with you. What are your thoughts about kind of artificial intelligence and what role it plays in the future of writing? I don't think... One, I think it's a tool. I, let me just say that first. I believe it's a tool to be used. Um, I don't think that we can run from it because it's already out. Pandora's box is open, so it's here. So as creators, as producers, as writers, the best thing we can do is learn to engage with it. And that's the only way we're ever going to be able to uh, limit uh, how it's seen in our own art, how it's seen, uh, if that's even possible. Where it is in the future, I have no idea because it's taking on a life of its own every day. Mm -hmm. You know, Doug said something and I really loved how he worded it, which is that this conversation we're having about AI today is going to be different next week because it's just no longer need to talk. Can yeah. you just, yeah, yeah. that'd be great. Yeah. So, <laughs> so that, is, that is my take. My take is listen, we cannot be afraid of it. We have to learn to engage with it. So, so and Doug, the robots any... remember me <laughs> when they do take over. Remember, I said work with you. Is, is, this, is this you really even say this? Yeah. Yeah. We don't know. Do we, we don't know. Yeah. So, Doug, uh, any any thoughts in addition what? to your own thoughts? From... <laughs> Thank you for quoting me. For my... yeah, that's awesome. Um, well, it'll be different next week. <laughs> well, it will be. Well, because different quote. Yeah. Uh, AI is is constantly changing. Yeah. And now we're, I'm using it almost every day. And the fact of the matter is, I like what Rick says, I'll quote him back to him, it is a tool. It is just like a chisel or a pen or a typewriter or anything. What do you do that, that you use it with? So what we, we use it for is either idea generation. If, if we talked about getting blocked, we didn't, if you're blocked on something, Entered into any of a number of tools, I'll list them off. You've got Jasper, you've got Claude, you've got Bard, you've got ChatGPT. Any of those can be used to just, as long as you can write a coherent prompt, and that's the important thing. Once you write a coherent prompt, it can give you ideas. It can give you jokes, maybe not good jokes, but saying that it's a tool, we have a, I, I created a, a, with a lot of the people I work with, I say, okay, AI can only be 40% of what is the final product. The other 60% has to be human. So it's kind of a, a, a technology human fusion. But here's the amazing thing for writers and for just filmmakers is you can use AI and you can create anything you want just on your computer right now. You can have AI help you with the script. Then you can take that script. You can put it into a tool like 11 labs and it will create for you a spot on great voiceover. Then you can take that and uh, you can take it into um, Mid Journey or Firefly or Runway ML. And now you can start creating your either your uh, storyboards or you can animate them. You can create a trailer. So really, it, then you can use uh, some of the tools for AI generated music. From beginning to end, your entire production and with the company that I'm working with now, we're, we're creating a virtual studio. So we will not have cameras, we will not have lights, we will not have voice actors. And I'm not against any of that because I love working on set, as Bennett said. But there's something about being a creator and then being able to just sit down and do it from stem to stern, from beginning to end, and knowing that I can create the whole thing it, and that's a that's a wonderful tool. Mm -hmm. That's that's great power. Mm -hmm. And and the tools are only getting better. Three weeks ago, Adobe's Firefly was not nearly as good as what it's creating now. And that's just three. It's amazing. Uh, Bennett, thoughts? I'm learning from Doug all the time about AI. He sent me a program to do some storyboards and to some scene, some world building. And uh, it's, again, to your point, creating the right prompt. It's here. I mean, we can't fight it. I, w I prefer everything a little more old school, mm. but it doesn't yeah. matter what I prefer. Uh, I'm, I live in this world. 
uh, and I probably have 10, 15, 20 years max of, of career life, so I'll probably still be able to go on set. But I don't know how movies are going to get made in the future. But one thing I will say is that dialogue, to your point, and comedy are still human yeah. endeavors. Mm -hmm. So that's where I still think I have a shot at mm -hmm. making a, a living as a, as a screenwriter because despite what's going on today, I'm pretty funny. I write pretty good dialogue. <laughs> That was really good. Thank you. Self-deprecation. It still works. But, but you know, the interesting thing is no. it, with, with you saying it's a tool and where you'll be, it's not binary. A and I, AI is not going to take away. Radio did not displace or television did not displace radio. We still have radio. We have podcasts now. This is a different form of radio. Film did not displace TV. Uh, or vice versa. And AI is just a tool. I mean, I paint. I can use acrylic. I can use pastels. I can use sumi ink. I can use oil. I can use watercolor. So AI is just oils. You can use it or you can say, no, I'm going to write it myself. Mm -hmm. Or you could use Procreate and an iPad to stimulate mm -hmm. all those different mediums. Yeah. Right. And uh, there you go. So, I mean, and, and in, Procreate and Photoshop and Art Rage, they've been around for how many years now? Pharrell Draw was one of the first ones. But yet you still have people like me going to art supply houses and buying pencils and pastels and ink. It's not going to replace it. No, it's, it's, it's not. But I'm, I'm, I'm an advocate of the human touch. I mean, I, at the end of the day, it's all entertainment for them, for the audience, it's entertainment. And hopefully it gets out there and people are entertained by whatever it is. I like, I do like it slowed down. I think that AI, when it first came out, let's just call it television, when it first came out, it, it's, it's a source to fragment the attention span of us. Mm -hmm. it, it fragments my attention span. Mm -hmm. Now the sound, now the bites are quicker. Everything's quicker, everything's faster on, on a, in a movie. If it's a slow 1940s movie, it's very difficult to watch mm -hmm. if, if you put it on today. Yeah. Very, but back then, perfect. Because back then, it was easy to sit and tell a story and look someone in the eye and engage with someone for a yeah. little while. And today, you can't, you can't find a kid and have him sit down for 30 minutes and tell a story back and forth and have him look at you without doing that. Yeah. You know? Wait a second, I got a text. I, I know kids that are texting, they could talk right here. They're texting right in front of me. Mm -hmm. So that's not for me. I like the human touch. Not that, and I thought about some of the things that, you know, some of the movies that I'm thinking about creating or have created, would it involve AI? Yeah, you'd have to, you'd have to. Cause how do you, how do you get a, uh, uh, you know, uh, the relative, the Renovant or the wood. Revenant. Yeah. yeah. The oh, Revenant. Revenant. Re uh, Revenant. Revenant. Who's got it? Yeah. Anyway, how do yeah. you get that sort of thing naturally? You, you can't see, but I do like that touch, um, the human touch and coming from my head and telling a story, but having it being captivating enough to still hold my attention without AI. In mm -hmm. the movie. And, I've, and I'm, gra I'm drawn to those kind of movies mm -hmm. when I watch them. I, I look for them on Netflix. I hardly watch anything with, with AI in it. Not, not a lot. Put it that way. It's 80, 20. So. For me, it's the, it's the head to the arm, to the pen, thinking about what would I do in a situation like that? And, and that's just, it's my take. I just think that we have been short circuited a lot because of AI and, and, and the creativity that we could have with the kids that are growing up today. They're just watching television. They're not thinking about how do I learn how to be a writer? How do I learn how to engage? They're, they're just not thinking that. They're just watching that and like, maybe I can make a video game or maybe I'm going to do nothing because I'm not worth it. And, and I know that's going into a whole different subject, but you know, <laughs> bouncing off of Jim's idea that that's what I was saying. I was going to tackle it from the academic perspective. And I still think no matter if it's a tool or a replacement or whatever it is, whatever it ends up being. I still think you still have to learn the foundations mm -hmm. on your own. You still have yeah. to learn how to be creative, whatever it is you're doing, painting, writing, building a house, doesn't matter. I think you learn it and then you learn how to incorporate the tool into that. So that's why I still think from an academic perspective Absolutely. at school, I don't think it should be a big tool that's incorporated yet. I think you learn the time. foundations and then you move into Get that. Get them excited about it. Well, it, it, it should simplify the process. 
it's not, not replace the process. Yeah, not replace the process. You're right. If you don't understand a basic three X structure, if you don't understand a character arc, AI is not going to teach no, you that. That's not going to help you. Because again, AI is just spitting out and predicting what you have put in your prompt. Yes. And you can write a garbage prompt and it's going to spit out garbage, garbage in, garbage out. But if you write a really good prompt and if you become a prompt engineer, then you can get some good information out of it. But you have to understand the fundamentals of storytelling. You but know? AI is going to learn that arc and AI is going to learn that structure and that could that could replace the genius that, that you, you, you can't See, get. I don't think it will in the sense that there is that part of the human, like you can, I was looking at some AI images today for something that we were doing and we were, and the, the creator of the image and I, she said, she said, she goes, you know, unless I really studied that image, I wouldn't be able to tell it was AI. Now there's some where you do it and there's 10 fingers on a hand. You're like, yep, that's AI. And then there's others where if you really hone it in, you're like, or Tennessee. Oh, it, it, no. What's that? Yeah. I think. But if, so I don't know. I'm not one of these. I'm not a, a chicken little. The sky is falling. Yeah. I don't think, again, TV didn't replace anything. We still have TV. We still have film. We now have YouTube. That didn't change anything. Um, I've been around long enough that this is the second wave of virtual reality. You know, mm -hmm. back in the 90s, we were with Jaron Lanier and the data glove. We were doing VR. And that, you know, we had these huge toilet bowls that we wore in our head and we called them, yeah. you know, a head mount. And so it should be used to enhance. I don't know that it's going to replace. I don't think that well, we're all of a sudden going to wake up one day and all of us are out of a job and all actors are out of a job. Is there a danger to that with nefarious characters who are going to, yeah, somebody's going to go make a movie using Leonardo DiCaprio's face and Brie Larson. And they're going to get sued or it's going to be underground. But... I think the tool makers are also putting in stop gaps so that you can't do that. So you can't type into a prompt, Leonardo DiCaprio runs down a street, you know, or something like that, and it'll get flagged. Not all the tools are doing that right now, but they will. I think that that's what the, the SAG after a, a, a strike was about. So mm -hmm. it, it'll happen. It won't it. I, I think, and I, I agree with everything that's been said here. I think artists, writers, creatives who have good foundations, right? And in, in, in color theory or three X structure or whatever your art is, are going to be able to use AI more effectively mm -hmm. than people who don't have those foundational education on what is good story, yeah. right? Cause there's still that director component to it that you have to look at these images, look at the story, listen to the song, listen to the music and have the ear or eye or thoughts to know what is good and what is not good. Yeah. And, and that requires a foundational education, which I think that schools like media tech are still going to be around. The tools are going to change. The camera and technology is going to change, but you have to have those foundational education to really be better. And I think the designers and artists of the future are going to embrace AI and say, with this foundational knowledge, I can be faster, better, more efficient with concepting and ideas and getting through and going from there. I know we're wrapping up on our time before we finish the podcast. What I'd like to do is go around the table and really ask this question. So what advice would you give to aspiring writers trying to break into the industry? And we'll go around the table and we'll start with you, Jim. Okay. So what advice would you give to aspiring writers who want to uh, get into the industry? Wow. I would just, uh, you know, if it's, a, if it's, if it's a writer, if it's someone that really wants to write, I would just say, be observant, observe the world and write from your heart. You know, uh, just, just keep writing, just write whatever's on your mind. And, and, uh, you know, it, it's, I would, I would rather have been last in, in this one. Cause this is a, this is a tough one. And it's, a, it, it's, it's the best one. What advice to give? Cause I want the writers that are coming up, the young kids that don't know that they're writers 
I mean, how do you how do you how do you find them? How do you spot them and and get a chance to encourage them mm -hmm. and pat them on the back? That was really good. Could you bring something in tomorrow and show me that? Mm -hmm. You know, and encourage them and, and not put a stopgap on them. You know, just and that's that was that was done to me early on. So being empathetic and and uh, advice advice to someone. I'm just trying to what would I, what would I would like to have heard? That was really good, Jim. You know. Keep writing. Um, yeah. That's it for now. Yeah. Lee? I guess uh, my two best pieces of advice, is, advice for uh, aspiring writers would be, first of all, write what you enjoy watching because you automatically represent the percentage of the audience. What percentage? I don't know. But you exactly. obviously... <laughs> obviously, <laughs> obviously <laughs> I was going to say it, so I didn't pick up on it. That's what I was going to say. Um, <laughs> but yeah, you represent a percentage of the audience, so you can't write to the trend because the trend will be done by the time your movie gets out. So right. write what you enjoy, first of all. Um, and second to uh, know what your story is about. That's like a, a huge question that if you work with Hollywood, they're going to ask you, producers are gonna ask you, creative executives are gonna ask you, like, if you don't know what your story is about, they're not going to work with you. You every Because everything in your story should service what your story is about, the mm -hmm. actions, the dialogue, the character arcs. And if you don't know what it's about, then you're just throwing together a whole bunch of maybe encapsulated or unencapsulated scenes that don't really work well together. You good, Bennett? To your point, uh, my advice to the kids or any new writer at any age, find a good log line so you know what the story is about. Doug wrote an incredible book called Log Lines uh, that's available on Amazon. <laughs> I highly recommend it. And he's not paying me. I get no commission. Uh, I wonder if that 20. <laughs> uh, my son is one of the best actors I've ever met. He just happens to be my son. He's a writer, entertainment attorney. He's just a brilliant guy. And some kid asked him at the, after an acting class, should I become an actor? And my son said, no. <laughs> and he said, well, why? He says, if I can talk you out of it, you shouldn't be an actor. Yeah. So the same would be true. If I can talk you out of being a writer, don't, you're not a writer. Yeah. I sense. write because I have to write. Yeah. I have no choice. Whether it's AI or not AI, I'm going to mm -hmm. be writing mm -hmm. tomorrow. Uh, probably tonight. I've got... Screenplay with Doug I'm working on. I've got one of my own. I've got a, two books I'm working on. Jay and I are talking about another book. No, the two books, actually. It's what I do. That's sort of my oxygen yeah. and why I'm alive. Mm -hmm. uh, the other thing is, if you have to write, write something that's meaningful. There's plenty of bad men with must, bad mustaches and gun stories out there. Don't write another one of those. I mean, it's been done. So write something with meaning, with heart that you'd be, sh be happy to show your buddies and your mom. Mm. Yeah. My two cents. Okay. Yeah. Doug? Um, I would say just write every day. And I mean, that's kind of an old thing, but just write. If you're going to write, I don't care if it's just on a napkin and you wrote a one stanza of a poem, just mm. write. Cause, and then read. You know, the, there's that balance of consuming and creating. Because, uh, and my, my daughter right now, she wants to be a writer. So she's reading a lot because by reading and then writing, you find your voice. And I think that's the important thing. And I'm going to get a little philosophical here, but there is no bad art. Okay. And, and that will be somewhat controversial, but you look at a movie like The Room, which then was made into another movie called The Disaster Artist, because it was one of the worst movies ever made. But the guy got a movie made yeah. and we're now celebrating how bad it is. That's so it became art. So find your voice and then create your art. And I would say, and I'm going to call out this table and forgive me, but we have a bunch of old white dudes at this table. Mm -hmm. There's not mm -hmm. one female. Uh, well, uh, we got a that guy. guy. You're not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sorry. Other than the one female. He's younger than you. I assume my job. To the point, there, there's, there's. There's no females at this table. Mm -hmm. Sure. There's a female voice. So you just, you find your voice. There's no, okay, we have the Hispanic voice, mm -hmm. but there's a lot of other voices out there. So find your voice, write it. You can't write it wrong. Mm -hmm. Now you may be able to write badly, but I can show you a lot of, there's a lot of people think that Ernest Hemingway could not write a sentence. Mm -hmm. So what's interesting is what is celebrated is also kind of corrected by a lot of things. James Joyce did weird things with his writing. So, 
Just write. And what's the motivation behind the writing? Is it just, it's getting is it out. We, we all have a yes. out, yeah. or is it to yes. get like, something? I like to, I like to add one thing to my advice to the writers is to network, because before I produced my feature film, I'd create a mini series to see if I really was funny. How does it translate the camera? Is it any good? How can I be better? Do I like working with actors? Do I really like this industry? You know, and so, you know, if you're a sound guy or a writer, meet the camera guy, meet the lighting guy, find a makeup artist, Girl. person, <laughs> human, find a human, preferably that is skilled in things that you aren't skilled in mm -hmm. and network and make friends and not artificially. Yeah. I mean, you all share interest in love of art. So I didn't mean to, to cut you off, but I would say yeah, network, sure. network, network. One of Jay's mottos as a teacher, I've gone to some of his classes. Jay's one of my mentors, by the way. Mm -hmm. Well, how can you do that if, if you never belong to any club that would have you as a member? That's my problem. <laughs> <laughs> how does it, how can you even? I, I want to address yours and then I'll wrap up and Rick and Jay have kind of, but to your point, what's the motivation? Yeah. To Bennett's point, he has to write. If he doesn't write, he will explode. Mm -hmm. I'm that same way. Mm -hmm. If you can be talked out of anything, whether it's writing, painting, graphic design, art, filming, you shouldn't do it. Right. So if there is something in you, that a voice that needs to come out, yeah. then write. Write every day. Write it poorly, edit it, you'll get better. And that's, what you, that's, what we need yeah. to, that's what we need to tell kids. Yeah. Or anybody that's well, new. I think I just did. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> We need to tell that. I mean, it was a compliment. I'm sorry, and I ruined it. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Here I called you. All right, Rick, let's bring us home, sir. Listen, we, I, we need to go. Well, I'm glad I get to get it last. But there's a piece of what we've all said, which is, for me, the truth. Okay, for me, I've said this a bunch of times, I, I'm sure individually on calls. Um, an artist creates because they have to, not because they want to. Um, that is, as we talked about, having to write. I'm going to write, and I do write on a daily basis, and it's not always for public consumption okay. as much as it is for me. Wow. I know that what, unfortunately, I do still have writing from when I was a child, unfortunately, sometimes, because I could look back on it and read it and go, wow. Seriously? But see, that's not unfortunate. That's a positive. It helps me to see the path. It helps me to see the growth. where I've grown. Yeah. Okay. Uh, also, don't take yourself so seriously. Yeah. You know, it's, 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 it, so that's, that's a piece of it. But it is... Uh, I don't I have my... Some for the next one, man. For the next one, you know. But this is, this is great. I mean, being able to, to look at it, to look back, to look at your stuff, whether it be yesterday stuff or to look back from this morning, whatever it is, that constant repetition of writing, you are going to get better. Having a safety net, you know, in a, in a, it doesn't have to be a partner, but in a friend who can read it and say, listen, I love this line. Even if it is just one line out of one page, I love this. Yeah, I'd love to point. see. I'd love to see more of this mm -hmm. one thing right here. And because I do believe there is positivity in everything that we do, we might not like the entire story, but there's always a line in there that we're going to take forward to that next one. Yeah. So, yeah, good point. Yeah. Well, gentlemen, I want to thank each of you for uh, spending time with us today at the table, and uh, I appreciate thank your you. insights. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, yeah, for, for coming. Together. And we definitely want to thank Media Tech. Yeah. Media Tech. And all the fantastic staff and operators and and folks here at Media Tech. Media Tech does a great job at helping to create future creators, right? In film and writing and music. So we want to support them as much as possible. And uh, thank you again. Yeah.